Hello, my name is Todd. I'm going to be giving you a quick introduction to compound light microscope, uh, parts and pieces, anatomy, and a quick guide on how to get started looking at a slide on this machine. These are microscopes. They're structured around lenses. We have two sets of lenses on a compound microscope. We have the ocular lenses that you put your eyes to and look through the microscope. And then underneath we have objective lenses. Uh, the ocular lenses on most of these microscopes have a magnification power of 10 times. And uh, the objective lenses underneath, uh, this microscope has four, that's pretty common. Some microscopes have three. Uh, they're typically color coded, red, yellow, blue, white, and you'll notice when you look at them that they are of different length. The shorter they are, the lower their magnification ability. The longer they are, the higher the magnification. On the scopes that we use, uh, the shortest objective is red. <clears throat> we call this the scanning objective because that's typically uh, the objective you have in place when you first put a new slide on and scan around the slide to find what you're looking for. You'll notice that the ocular lenses on these microscopes and many um, college level compound microscopes slide back and forth. And what this does is it allows you to fit the ocular lenses to your eyes. Everybody has different width face your eyes are set a different distance apart. It's called the interpupillary distance. These microscopes will adjust themselves to your particular interpupillary distance. You might also notice that there are focus rings on these ocular lenses. If you spin them counterclockwise, they move out. If you spin them clockwise, they move in. What this does is it allows you to independently focus the image for each eye. I'll show you how to do that. What you typically would like to do when you first start out on one of these microscopes is to adjust these so that they're about equally uh, spun out and about halfway. Uh, that will give you the ability to adjust either eye in or out instead of having them all the way down or all the way out. You want them about halfway and about equal. Uh, underneath the lens structures you have the stage. Uh, this is where you set your slides. Uh, you'll notice that on the back uh, of the microscope there are some geared knobs. These are our uh, focus adjustment knobs. The larger inner knob if you turn that, you'll notice the stage moves up and down. If you turn it towards you, it moves down, away from you, moves up. This is your course focus adjustment. Uh, when you turn this uh, focus adjustment knob, uh, it's geared in such a way that a little bit of movement on the knob means a lot of movement on the stage. The inner knob is the fine focus adjustment. If you spin that knob, the stage does move but uh, almost imperceptibly. So we use the coarse focus adjustment to get our primary focus, our first focus, to get an image in view, and then you use the fine focus to get it nice and sharp and in detail. On the stage, these are mechanical stages. You have some stage controls. I'll turn this around. On the far side, couple of gears hanging down. Uh, the bottom one here moves the slide left to right. The top one moves the slide in and out so that you don't have to get your fingers underneath moving the slide around when you want to move something. You just have your hand here and you can move them in two dimensions. There's also a spring-loaded clip on the stage that holds the slide in place. Underneath the stage is a structure called the condenser apparatus. Uh, the condenser takes the light from the light source 
and condenses it, focuses that light up through the specimen on the slide. Typically, you want this condenser all the way up. There is a, a small knob underneath that when you spin that, the condenser will go down or up. There are some times when adjusting that condenser can be helpful. In most cases, you'd rather just have it all the way up. On the bottom of the condenser will be another uh, important part called the iris, and uh, this is a little clip that hangs down that you can slide back and forth. And what that does is the same thing that the iris of your eye does. It allows more or less light through, and uh, that can have a tremendous benefit when you're adjusting for contrast in your images. There's a light source underneath on a dimmer switch or a rheostat and that's the basis of these microscopes. Now, when you take a new slide, uh, we have here our basic uh, training wheel slide for microscopes. It's the uh, typewriter or laser printer letter E in a very small point font. To show you here how to mount this, you take the thumb clip on the stage, spring it back, slide the slide into the back opposite corner and let the spring do the work for you. It'll hold the slide in place just nicely. What you want to do is have the light on and shining up through the condenser. Use your slide controls on the back side here and move that specimen, in this case the letter E, into the center so it's lit up from below. The next thing you want to do is to make sure that you have your scanning objective in place. So spin that around and uh, then without looking through the oculars you look at the slide and the stage you use your course adjustment knob to raise that stage up virtually all the way. You can kind of tell when you're in a ballpark because when you spin the other objectives into place they don't hit the slide so if they hit the slide then you kind of back it off and I know now that I'm in pretty good shape. So I get the E centered, I've got the stage up. What I do is I lean forward into the microscope and I'm adjusting the oculars back and forth so that I don't get double vision, so that I get one view with both eyes open. And uh, I want to adjust this uh, course adjustment knob until I can see the E. Now I can see it there. Then I center it to make sure it's right in the center of my field of view. Do a little final adjustment of the back and forth here to set my interpupillary distance. And then I use the fine adjustment to get it just as clear and as crisp as I can. Now at this point, it might not be possible to get it absolutely clear. And the issue is eyes come in different strengths. I have different prescriptions for my glasses and such. That's where we can use the independent focusing ability of our eyepieces, our ocular lenses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my right eye and keep my left eye open and I'm going to use the fine focus adjustment to get it as crisp and clean as I possibly can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my left eye because that eye is focused and I'm going to open my right eye. When I do that, I do not want to use the focus knob to get this one clean and crisp. I'm going to use the focus ring on the ocular. So I'll do this now. And if you've used a good pair of binoculars, this is exactly the same thing you do. So I've gotten each of my eyes independently focused and that specimen, in this case the letter E, is in very, very good clarity. It's centered, it's in focus, it's clear at low or scanning power. What I can do then is I can now go to a higher magnification. Before I do this, before you ever switch magnifications, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the specimen is exactly centered in good focus. If you do that, when you go to the next higher power, your specimen should still be there. It won't be perfectly centered, 
and it won't be perfectly focused, but it'll be there. You'll be able to see it. I see it. I recenter the now higher magnification image, and I use the fine focus adjustment, and there I'm good. Hopefully, this uh, will help you come into lab uh, a little better prepared and able to, uh, within a few minutes, get yourself comfortable with a microscope and get your first uh, few slides into focus. All right, good luck.